Hi everyone, uh, this is another video about primitive roots. Okay, um, let me remind you of what the order of n, or sorry, the order of a modulo n is, right? So we have this notation. It's just the least positive integer d, such that a to the d is congruent to 1 mod n. And we have the stipulation that the GCD of a and n must be 1, or else there's no order mod n. Okay, for example, the order of 1 mod n is always going to be 1. Okay. The or, and we saw in class that the order of 4 mod 11 was 5. And the reason is, if you just compute the powers of 4 mod 11, you have 4, and 4 squared is 16, which is 5. 4 cubed is 4 times 5, which is 9 mod 11. Um, 4 to the 4th is 4 times 9, which is 36, which is 3 mod 11. And 4 to the 5th is 3 times 4, which is 12, which is 1 mod 11. Okay, and so we see um, the least, here, the least positive integer d is the integer 5. Okay, because 4 to the 5th is congruent to 1, and 4 to any lower power is not 1. Okay, okay and recall that um, the order of a mod n has to be a divisor of phi of n. Okay, remember phi of n, that's the number of elements of the units mod n. Okay. And then we just have this proposition which kind of uh, tells us a little bit more about the order. It says that if d is the order of a mod n, then these powers of a, these d powers of a, are all distinct. Okay, and furthermore, if you have two powers of a which are the same, then it means that the powers are congruent mod d, where again d is the order of n of a mod n. Okay. Okay, so in order to show this, what we have to do is we're first going to show that if a to the n is congruent to 1 mod n, or sorry, if a to the, let's use a different letter, yeah, a to the m is congruent to 1 mod n, then, then we're going to show the order actually divides m. We're going to say d divides m. Again, d is the order of a mod n. Okay. And then this property will imply that the order of n divides phi of n, but it'll also tell us the, 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 these two statements in the proposition. Okay. Um, just an aside, you can see that. Uh, these two statements are kind of equivalent, um, but we'll just show that they follow from this other statement. Okay, so let's show, let's suppose that a to the m is congruent to one mod n, and we just do as in class, so we, we divide d into m. So we use a division algorithm. So we write m is qd plus r, where r is between zero and d, and this makes sense, remember the definition of order is the least positive integer d, so d is not zero, so we can divide it and we can take m and divide by d. Right. If d equals zero, this makes no sense. Of course, okay, so, and then just as in class, now we have this equation, we raise a to this exponent m. So a to the m is one, mod n, but a to the m is also a to the qd plus r. We use our laws of exponents. That's just a to the q to the dth power times a to the rth power. Again, this is all mod n. And, or sorry, uh, we should rewrite this. I did it the wrong way. We should rewrite it this, this as a to the d to the qth power. Okay. Now if we do that, a to the d is 1, that's the definition of order, right, or part of the definition anyways, that a to the d is gives you 1 mod n. So this gives you 1 to the q times a to the r mod n. 
That's just a to the r mod n. Okay, so now we have that a to the r is congruent to 1 mod n. r is less than d, but d is the least positive integer such that a to the d is congruent to 1. r is another integer such that a to the r is congruent to 1 that's less than d, but it may not be positive. If it's positive, that's a problem because then r would be the order, not d. Okay, or something smaller than d anyways. So it must be that r equals 0. So r equals 0, and if not, or else, d was not the order after all. Okay. okay so r equals 0. But then it just says that d divides m. Okay. So we've shown that um, if a to the mth is congruent to 1 mod n, then the order divides m. So now suppose that a to the j is congruent to a to the i. Okay. Since the GCD of a and n is 1, there's like a inverse, we can multiply both sides by a to the minus i. So we can do a to the j times a to the minus i, and that's congruent to 1 mod n. And that's just the same as a to the j minus i. So a to the j minus i is congruent to 1 mod n. We just showed that if a to the something is congruent to 1, then d divides the something. So d divides j minus i, in other words, i is congruent to j mod d. Or sorry, yeah, that's what I want. Okay. And so we've shown this part, and this part of the statement implies that these d powers of a are all distinct. For example, like say like a squared was congruent to a to the fourth, then um then that would mean that d divides, you know, 4 minus, that, that would mean that 2 and d are congruent mod n, or mod, mod d, sorry. Okay. And that can't happen for the integers in the, in the range from 0 up to d minus 1, basically. Okay, so I'll leave the, the proof there. Okay, so now it, it tells us that, um, like, for example, if a is a primitive root mod n, that means that the order of a is phi of n. That means each element of each unit modulo n is one of these powers of of, of a. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um Right, so let's just stop the video there and in the next video, I want to show that modulo p, a prime number, primitive roots exist. Okay.